have to keep in mind that the team so far, the level 35 has, uh, bosses have been running. You know, Sebastian on that Hydra. You got Mind and Nico Loco on those frontline duelies and Tentatech, respectively. And of course, Carranza with that Bamboozler. Like, he's still using it. He's still looking really good with it, too. And also, we have a blue. It seems like we have a blue point as well on the, the team of. Uh, I believe this is Ur Yeah, I believe it's Haruka. And they already have the Power Clam already ready to start throwing into the. I guess the last year right now. And uh, Armor is almost being ready. Having a couple of technical difficulties right now with seeing the stream, uh, but definitely seems like we have a game here. All right, yeah, it, it seems like they they are holding their own right now. Karanza just trying to take careful shots right now at that baller. Uh, the power plant has been dropped, but of course, um, the power plant has been dropped. But it, now it's actually been thrown into the barrier right now. So like, uh, Iruka coming up with that first power plant dunk. Uh, they're looking really strong, Monkey, of course, you know, holding down that bridge, which is a very key point in this uh, in in this map. Um, but right now, just Sebastian picking up that power plant. I'm not sure if he actually meant to do that. He's holding on to the ink armor. Two members of Eruka do go down, so this is going to be the opportunity for that they need in order to actually push in. Nico Loco actually using that uh, ink jet, and of course we have the uh, ink armor being used as well, so that's going to be a nice uh, special pair up going on at the moment. Two members do go down in Eruka. Sebastian actually looking. That's going to be a full wipe right there, just in the blink of an eye. Sebastian's going to be able to get that free power plant dunk. Yeah, Sebastian getting the free power. Clam dunk right there, nicely done by him. Uh, we are. Seems like they actually get um, all the way to 47 points, which is a pretty decent point amount of points. But Sebastian also throwing a couple more uh, power clam or clams in there and making sure that you know they can cement uh, the victory there. You know, I, I gotta ask you, dude, like in a, in a situation like this, you have you managed to pick up a lead, a couple actually by Nico Loco right there. Okay, but anyways, getting back to my question, you get a nice lead. Sometimes, is it worth it to exchange your, um, basically throw yourself into the fray, into like a horde of the enemy team, just to be able to get like one or two clams in, just to extend the, the timer, or possibly push that lead, or is it just not worth it sometimes? Well, I believe, like, it depends on that, how much time you really have. Like, if you have, like, a bunch of time, then it's probably better to play a little bit more passive than usual. Because, I mean, you have quite a big lead at that point, so it's just a thing where you probably want to focus on uh, just trying to charge specials so that you can fend off against the counter push that's uh, possibly to come in. So it's definitely just to, you know, play a little bit more safe than usual. And if it's a thing where, I, mean, I guess there's not a lot of time left too, then probably around the same thing, just try to, uh, I guess, make the time go down much quicker or just, I guess, stall it a little bit more and just try and figure out where the power clam uh, could be generated from the other just try it. Yeah, some beautiful play actually coming in by Snipes actually manages to take a Carenza. Carenza, who is already like playing very defensively, manages to get a key pick that he needs for the rest of his team to prevent any sort of push into the base. Right now, Mind actually securing the bridge there with Nico Loco, constantly just acting together as like a two man unit, basically clearing out anything that they see. Jake gets taken down right now, but it's going to be a trade. Three on, uh, it's going to be a three on three situation right now. Mind having to duck away, but gets to take it out in the process right now. So that means uh, Iruka, this is going to be their opportunity to be able to push in. They do have 16 clans, so this might be exactly the opening they're looking for, but Nico Loco still on the defensive. Nico Loco coming in with the attack on the monkey right there, taking out the power clam. So now Iruka don't have a power clam to be able to, uh, I guess, pick up and, you know, take away right now. Nico Loco coming away with a three right there, possibly getting a four. Possibly, but no, it has the help of the teammate there. Bullpoint is in their street right now. Now, just waiting. Looks like Nico's going for the aggressive right now, taking out Monkey. Nice streak by Nico, right? Now. Just to, uh, I guess, prevent uh, Ruka from, uh, I guess, having any more contention into this game right now. Yeah, it's just amazing how Nico is just able to, like, him, his presence alone was able to cause so much chaos and havoc uh, for the rest of Aruka. 
which is going to be really important. If Iruka, sorry, if, if level 35 bosses have a chance of being able to actually win this, which they do, like, they're looking so strong with a lead of 35. If they need to be able to actually win this game, they need to keep up that uh, aggressive presence. And with, of course, 10 seconds left on the clock, they're actually looking to secure this. One member does go down on Iruka, so level 35 bosses is just farming up their specials, trying to play the neutral as much as possible. Over time right now, this is going to be the last chance for Monkey to be able to dunk in the clan. It's going to be a 2v2 situation. Monkey actually trying to run under the bridge, trying to avoid any fire, but he's being chased, and he does take out mine. So right now, Monkey is actually uh, trying to see if he can actually jump. He's going to be able to go for it, but he's still got a lot of power clams to be able to dunk in for the rest of the team. Three members are still up right now for Ruka, and they actually do have the power clams. They dunk it in. It's going to be only five oh more clams. Oh my god, it's the last Yup, it's going to be up to Monkey, and I think that's pretty much going to be the last push that they have, but it's not going to be enough as the as the goal does go back up and a close shave. But of course, uh, level 35 bosses managing to have stellar play and defense throughout the entire game managed to game, take game one. I can't believe this. They actually managed to take game one versus Aruka. Right, yeah. Don't count them out. Don't count them out. I, I, I knew that they had some sort of... They had something in them, you know? I, I, I feel like they... I definitely just felt like that. The way they're playing, they coordinate so well together. Just thinking with all of that, they definitely have a chance to take out Aruka. And I gotta give a shout out to Aruka still because they did a really good... They they, 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 they tried. They, they, they definitely they had a the really opportunity there. To... Yeah, they almost got that. They had the power clam go in. They had the follow up clams, but it's just a matter of, you know, having I guess enough at that point. But you know, it was unfortunate. But it looks like we do have a very very close game in the semifinals. And now moving on to tower control, <laughs> Wahoo World. Yeah, you know. Okay, so going into this match, Iruka has one thing on their mind that's going to be a huge problem a roadblock for them getting into the grand finals and it basically is this nico loco that's like i mean the rest of the team they're doing fantastic but nico was on fire the last game 21 ka i didn't check how many ink jets he got but like just the entire time running around the map just being able to pick off so many players on aruka it's just it like i think if you know he's got so much momentum going into this game and just being able to just blaze through like all the members of aruka like that and of course the rest of the team uh on uh level 35 bosses just being able to capitalize on that so i think right now it's just going to be a matter of aruka being able to just being very careful and um seeing what they can actually do to not only take out nico loco but just like negate the rest of the team on level 35 bosses some might say Nico is loco. <laughs> I, you know what? I was okay. I wanted to make that joke earlier, but I didn't say anything. But I'm so glad. It's moments like this. I'm so glad to be able to cast with you. My goodness, that <laughs> someone had no. to say it. Someone had to Yo, say it. Somebody on Twitch chat, dude, stop in capitals. But you know what? I say keep going. That, it, that we 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 out here. We doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. All right. Anyways, uh, game okay. two. We got Wahoo World Tower Control. Oh, man. <laughs> game two. We got Tower game Control, <laughs> Wahoo World. All right. And we got some pretty standard comps right here. We have the, you know, Eruka using the, I guess, it's not like they're going with double support, undercover, and it ends up. With one okay. Slayer and a Charger as well, and, you know, classic uh, level 35 bosses going to the same comp position as they usually do. And, I think the uh, only difference that they have is that Blaster pick right now. Yeah. Now, uh, it kind of seems like Karanza, Karanza could probably have a field day with it, because he does have quite a... I mean, he, has, he definitely has the accuracy, but he has a better matchup against some of the weapons uh, on uh, uh, level... Oh, bah, 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 bah. Level 35 bosses. Aruka. Yeah. Aruka. Aruka. Oh, Aruka. That's what I meant. So. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I will say this is an elite player. The one thing that gives me a lot of trouble are bamboozlers because they just melt the canopy. Like, you know, you're a umbrella player. You kind of go up in the front lines and you're just kind of like, all right, I got this thing defending me. But you know what? Before you know it, a couple of shots and bam, you're done. And the bamboozler just looks at you and is all like, what up? Right? So 
yeah. in this case, it's going to be really difficult. I do think that the double support comp that level uh, Ruka is bringing in to sort of deal with uh, this aggression that level, level 35 bosses can be a little bit questionable, but it seems to be working. They are actually pushing the tower right now. Monkey's still looking really good on that uh, on that tower, uh, and it's just a matter of level 35 bosses trying to see what they can do to respond to this. Now, I just want to point out that the Iruka does have the Stingray ready, but it's just a matter of when... It would definitely really help them with that switch play. It's just a matter of who can they swap for the tower to, to, to be able to get that Stingray out. But fortunately, it doesn't look like that, ha that happens. Uh, level 35 bosses actually get the wipe onto Iruka right now, and they do have some specials coming in. They have the Ink Armor, they have the Ink Jet, and they also have the Tensor Missiles right now. So they have a really good combination of weapons to actually get this get something going right now they now have two ink jets going in for this so it's just a matter if they can kind of swap the other players out and use their specials to their advantage Ooh, level 35 boss is having a bit of a field day but then two members get taken out by snipes making it look easy are now just pop in that ink jet trying to see if he can actually take down any stragglers right now of course uh last member on nicolo nicoloco who actually was just managing to try and uh dodge away from that ink jet does not do so, unfortunately, but that's fine. Snipes manages to sneak away with the trade, and Carranza right now pushing up to mid with that bamboozler, trying to see what he can actually do um, to take back the tower. Yeah, we have Carranza right here now. He's close to the, uh, the Tenta missiles right now. If there was, any, if it, if there was a thing where he swapped the uh, play, two players on the left right there, he could probably use that as an advantage to enable a push, but it doesn't happen at, at that point. Uh, we have Cardin right now, with the undercover brother right now, facing off an inkjet, just trying to stay safe here. Fortunately, Nico go goes in with the inkjet, getting a nice shot there, getting the fall off with the, <laughs> the, the blaster right there. And it does seem that uh, level 5 and 5 bosses are now in control of this. Now, it's just a matter of they can get past this first checkpoint, and it'll give them enough time to actually get some stuff going. They really need to look for the ends up, as Chai is right next to the tower right now, challenging uh, Charenza right now. Unfortunately, Charenza doesn't win the battle there. And Monkey has this thing ready, and just trying to find a pick. Can't get quite close to Sebastian with the Hydra, and Sebastian just holding it down right now, trying to get somebody off right now. It does not really close to the ink commerce to enable a push to get going right now, but looks like he's going to get on board of this tower as their two players are now down on uh, Iruka. Yeah, level 35 bosses constantly, time and time again, they're actually going for these pushes. They're not afraid by any means. They take down one, the Kensal Brella on the opposing team right now. Sebastian still trying to uh, farm up that ink armor and is probably going to be, yeah, decides to pop it right now. Three members actually do go down on uh, members Iruka. now. So, all members, that's pretty much going to be it. I'm not sure if this is going to be able to be a, uh, a lead, but definitely what they need right now. They still have to clear out that second checkpoint before they actually make any pertinent push towards oh, the end. Sebastian kill. takes out Snipes. Going to be beautiful, Ooh, beautiful kill. And I think this is pretty much going to be the, front, the, the last legs that they have in this push. It's going to matter right here if they're actually going to be able to get the lead right here. 26 to 27. It's oh, going to be so close. Point. Oh my goodness! And they managed to get the lead! Nicely beautiful. done by, I believe it was Carranza actually, last second getting onto the tower, taking one of the players out to be able to take the lead there. 20 seconds left, it's all, it's really down to the wire right now. Monkey has this Stingray, may be able to use this as a, I guess, some way to get a pick, but unfortunately though, one of the players, the Dooney player, using the Inkjet, getting taken out straight away, and Aruka looking like, like they are losing this right now. Level 35 boss is going to take the win on this oh. game two right now and it's only one more game until you know if they win if they get the, to the grand finals right there i can't believe what i'm seeing i thought i thought this would have been a clean three or maybe a three one for iruka but the level 30 by bosses i don't know what happened to them what kind of transformation they took midway through this tournament but it just seems like they just stepped up Nico Loco once again looking absolutely strong in that blaster, be it either, either a T-Tech or a blaster, put him on any weapon, Nico Loco will just absolutely just dominate. And of course the rest of the team just doing fantastic, Sebastian just doing a fantastic job with the uh, back line, mine just being an extra um, offensive pressure, just being able to push up as much as possible. And then, you know, we can't sing enough praises about Carranza's bamboozler, just sticking tried and true to that weapon, no matter whatever game mode and comp it is. It's just being able to... Um, like it seems like they're not they're not really 
changing up their weapon comps too much. They're just sticking to a strategy. They know it works, and it just seems like it's paying off in spades. Yeah, it's really paying off. Like you know, if it's if it if it doesn't, uh, what's the how do you say the saying again? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Really. So you know, if, yeah. and as you can see right now for level thirty five bosses, it is really working out for them, and it's just a matter of you know just. I guess keeping the same mindset that they're in right now, if they can just, uh, I guess, play the A game into this next game right now, they have an opportunity to get to the grand final. Yeah, if they manage to get this one last game that they need to be able to push towards the end, this can be huge for them. Not only they all got the first seed in the entire tournament, but they be kind of setting themselves up for like that grand finals push. And you know what? I, you know, with this kind of level of play that they're showing, this level of fearlessness that they have, I would not be surprised at this point if they actually become, if they, they come in and they win this. Well, they do have uh, the oppositions of the Lotus Gang and Splatbusters to, you know, that could possibly be a threat to them. But, you know, at this point in time, knowing that they can beat the top seed right now, it definitely gives them a big confidence boost that they could possibly take this uh i guess take take the entire tournament from this mm -hmm. all right so here we go game three rainmaker anchovy games we've already seen a lot of rainmaker we haven't seen any anchovy what can you tell me about that so anchovy games with rainmaker uh, it's a little bit interesting that you have that top the, the or not the top part but the, the the far left part is uh climbable Definitely one of those areas that you can possibly pick up the Rainmaker and uh, push it through. Just, I guess, one of the more safer areas. But another place where you can also push it through, I believe, it would be through uh, the, the fan. Now, honestly, I always say this when playing this, right? Um, I guess, Rain, I guess, playing Anchovy in general, is controlling the opposition's fan is very, very important because it allows you get, it allows you to get onto the uh, the other platform of. The other platform much easier once you do have that control. Now, Aruka, right now we do have some control. I guess they're, they're, they're trying to get control back of their platform right now. Karanza trying to go for a sneaky flank right there. Couldn't get the sh get the, the shots onto Monkey right there. Going against two players right here, it's the NZF and the Charger. Now, it does seem like level 5 bosses have the control right now. Looks like they're trying to make a push. Let him. Mine trying to lead the way for them, and also Nico. Snipes getting a nice two there to actually stop that. Yeah, that was going to be the, the push that they were looking for, but I think they were too overzealous with that push. Three members on the level 35 bosses do go down. Here come the bubbles, of course. Garden trying to actually move to a little bit more of a safer position. Throws down the bubbles. Keeping that mid control is going to be so key for this, because I think that dictates a large portion of the flow of the game, really. Uh, Garden right now, actually trying to sit in the back. Nico Loco trying to push the bubble, avoiding narrowly that snipe that was coming in. Inkjet does come out. Nico Loco not going to be able to actually pick up that Rainmaker, but trying to see if he can actually get the sniper on plat. Oh, Monkey nice. goes down. Beautiful Inkjet play right here. Nico Loco probably going to try to seek in that Rainmaker. Just goes for it. Rain going for a few more points. Look at this. He's going all the way. He might be able to actually secure this, but no, getting up at least to 24 points. Two down from uh, Iruka right now. Monkey getting two clutch snipes. Snipes there. Karanza trying to do this for himself now. It looks like he might be able to get a play. If he can pop the Reiki, he might be able to pop it right now. All the members of level 35 bosses are jumping in, trying to secure and pop this Rainmaker. It is a stalemate right now. It looks like one of the players of Iruka going down at the same time. Two members going down. Almost oh. Karanza pushing it all the way to 30, 35 bosses. I am running out of things to say. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't worry, dude. I'd be very proud of a situation like that, too, because in a blink of an eye, just uh, before you knew it, but it, was, it just happened to be like Nico Loke was just all alone there, and just the rest of the team converges in and says, you know what, let's do this. And they just go in and Leroy Jenkins, that Rainmaker, to victory. Great play by both teams, but of course, level 35 boss is just showing us this amazing turn. Uh, like, they just went from, I, I don't know what, I can't, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Like, now, I mean, the question that we all got to ask, is it the top seed or the level one seed? Because, you know, everyone just knows that's how Mafia works, right? Mm-hmm. All right. 
So, hmm. Bad joke, I know, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just... <laughs> no, I like it, I like it. I'm just, I'm also just thinking, like, it just, I, I think I'm just still kind of, like, flabbergasted about, like, what's going on, because, like, we got level 35 bosses sitting right now at Winner's Finals. No, it's Grand Finals. My bad. Um, but now we got, like, we're just finishing up this game between Lotus Gang and Splatbusters. I'm just taking a look at that right now. They're, it seems like they're both evenly tied 1-1 right now. So... I'm not sure if we're going to be able to jump into that game anytime soon or if uh, they're going to be able to finish it up and we can go into uh, Grand Finals just immediately right off the bat. But um, my goodness, <laughs> like, wait, I think that that's pretty much it, right? It was best of five. I think it was a clear 3-0. So. Yeah, clear 3-0. That was best of five. Now they move on to, uh, to, to, to finals, which will be a best of seven. So, you know. You have to win four games to make sure to be able to take the entire tournament. Now we're just going to be waiting for the semi-finals game with the Lotus Gang and the Splatbusters to eventually conclude. So it could be either one of those two to go against level 35 bosses. Uh, could be a really interesting game. Like I don't know what else to say, really. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so... Um, a couple of things that I just wanted to mention is that uh, the other semi-final match that we're finishing up, of course, it is a best of five, but as we head into grand finals, it's going to be a best of seven. We're going to be starting off on Splat Zones, but on Camp Triggerfish, which is actually, we haven't seen this map yet. Now, zones on Triggerfish is tricky because it's like you got two separate um, zones. Mm -hmm. uh, you have no connecting bridge. Um... And you obviously tend to see a little bit more of a flavor, uh, sorry, a very specific play style or strategy going into this. Now, things have changed so much within the last little while. So it's like I can't really put my finger exactly on what tends to work most or optimally here. So this is kind of a good opportunity for me to learn from uh, from you, dude. Uh, what would you think would be such like uh, what would you think would be optimal uh, going into this? So the thing with like uh with Camp Triggerfish Zones is that it's like one of the most versatile, uh, I guess, maps in terms of like what composition you can actually run on it. Like there are so many things you can do and it's actually insane how many things you can really do. Like some things like you might, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not going to see it in this tournament right now. We're probably not going to see like a double charger comp, which is something that's uh, 